Hey everybody, welcome to Hot Rods and Horsepower. Um, you know, so uh, this here is a hot car. It's one of the hottest cars. This is one of the hottest days. Today is going to be 100 degrees, so being that it's going to be 100 degrees, we're going to touch some of the untouchable cars. This is one of the cars that I wish I owned because you just have bragging rights to own it. We're going to call this, well, it's actually, technically, it is called the Cadillac the Cadillac 16 2003 okay so we're gonna go and go ahead and do this read real quick and keep it moving all right so it says with Bugatti having unveiled for production a near 1,000 brake horsepower monster and Maybach having put into production a super luxurious limousine it was going to take something pretty special from Cadillac <clears throat> to really draw the crowds at the 2003 Detroit Motor Show. And you'd be hard pressed to argue that the company didn't pull out all the stops with a 16 because this concept combined the most outrageous aspects of the of both cars, a huge hyper luxurious body shell and a massively powerful engine in one crazy package all right so um this is this car has 16 cylinders all right it's uh it's pretty uh it's really impressive that's really cool how that side opens up like that all right as company chairman bob lutz said the 16 is a modern interpretation of everything that made cadillac the standard of the world and can again it's a reminder of a glorious past as well as a progressive statement it was no coincidence that the Rolls-Royce had also unveiled its hyper-luxurious Phantom in 2003, a car with which the 16 would have competed directly in the pre-war days of the V6 Cadillacs. This American company was seen in the make in the as the maker of some of the best cars in the world, but its image had slipped in the late 20th century and it was viewed as old-fashioned however while Rolls-Royce was in much the same position its phantom turned this into a virtue and the marquee successfully played on its traditional qualities the 16 wouldn't play the same card it would feature high quality materials throughout but the technology would be cutting edge. All right, so let's, let's look at it. That's the Bruce Wayne right there. But all those high numbers relating to power, torque, and cylinders were just an excuse to grab attention. The real reason for 16 was to show people the design direction that Cadillac was aiming to take. A 16-cylinder engine was just a red herring sadly even though the 16 was unveiled when the cadillac i mean when the global economy was on a high the investment required okay to pull that car into production was always going to be massive all right and in the and in the uh certainty the sales of the such a car would be absolutely tiny so as a business case the 16 never made uh sense all right so they're they're they're, they're gonna just say they felt like you know the 16 it it wasn't gonna sell a lot you know i'll tell you what if i had the dough i'd buy it right now matter of fact somebody give me a 16 all right, reading on. Cadillac introduced the world's first production of the V16 in the 1930s, and with retro being immensely popular when the 16 was unveiled, the company reckoned it was only fair to cash in on such a rich heritage. That's why the concept featured a new take on, on the 16 engine with a pair of the company's V8s 
joined together to produce a normally aspirated 13.6 liter powerhouse capable of generating 1,000 brake horsepower and an equally ridiculous 1,000 pounds of uh, pounds foot per torque uh, of torque. All this power was transmitted to the rear wheels VIA, a four-speed automatic, pretty cool transmission. All right, so it's going to take you, it's going to take you, it's going to take you, and it's really going to take you. All right, so check this out. As a token, a gesture aimed at aimed at keeping the environmentalists happy. All right. The electronic control, the electronics controlling the engine, could shut down some of the cylinders, so that the fuel consumption and uh, con cons consequently the emissions wasn't so frightening. That's pretty wild, right? The technology was called displacement on demand. It's kind of like what these uh, the starters are doing right now. Their displacement on demand too the starters for all cars and it allowed the 16 to run on just eight or even four <laughs> that is so cool cylinders if cylinders if the power uh, requirements were weren't too great despite the car's huge dimension weight was kept down to a surprisingly low 5,000 uh four 5,004 pounds. That's or 2,270 kilograms. You know, that's pretty light. 5,000. I mean, for a car, it's kind of heavy, but it's not really that heavy considering you got, you know, 16 cylinders. Thanks to aluminum uh, being used for more for much of the car structure as well as the enormous engine, at a time when 20-inch uh, wheels, okay, were more or less and the limit of the road cars as well as concepts the 16 managed to go beyond this you know in Cadillac rims you know at each corner of the car there were huge 24 inch wheels housed in rubber band profile tires a crazy low profile of 265 40 r24 was used all around pretty cool huh all right, we're going to read on a little bit. Love the way the hood opens up. It's got to open up that side there, you know, because it's got to check them cylinders out. Not really. You want a car like this, you don't, you don't work on it. You get people to work on it. This is like owning a, a special airplane, you know. You don't even take it to the dealer. You have uh, the dealer specialist work on it. But this car should never have to be worked on. But if it does, that's what you do. All right, now check this out. This is the design. It says, the, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Technology, I'm not done yet. The driver had an essay, an easy time of things, thanks to a very simple dashboard layout. And instead of optic for a glazy digital display, Cadillac went for analog instruments. Now, that's interesting, to say the least. You know, analog instruments, I mean, in a V12, but you know what? It's, uh, it's just very simplistic, I'll tell you that. Uh, sometimes all of that technology is not, you know, no needed. Especially when all of the technology is in the motor. It says, middle, and car computers were starting to become a must-have accessory for those who were uh, Schaefer'd, so the 16 featured terminals for computing uh, while on the move. Okay. So basically it had USB ports maybe. I'm just guessing. Uh, the cabin was filled with uh, ex exquisite materials from the finest hides of beautiful present wood veneers with plenty of alloy and evidence too. Yes indeed. Love the, the design of the interior. Wish I could uh, show you all. Oh my gosh, could you imagine having that? Wow. The 16 uh, interior, okay. Uh, the 16 interior was the height of the luxury uh, uh, with its advanced passenger electronics hidden from view. Oh, when not in use. Now that is so cool, isn't it? 
so the car does have technology because I'm looking at it I'm like it looks plain it's hidden in view when not in use a lot of the technology you won't even see because it's made to feel at home it's made to not have a whole bunch of buttons and stuff and making you feel like you're um, you know a night rider you know yeah it's made to not feel like night rider that's what I'm trying to say so um, all right moving on the exterior design was a work of pure genius because <clears throat> okay because although the 16 was more than 18 feet you know what I say although the 16 was more than 18 feet that's a pretty long car yeah it was more than 18 feet long all right it didn't look especially big and bulky all right the use of the long waistline gave the car more dynamism dynamism nice word and by incorporating subtle aluminum flashes along the flanks it looked even more even lower still <clears throat> the long hooded fold the long hood fold into two halves along the center line of the car just a Cadillac's pre-war cars had done and in the rear overrides the four exhaust pipes were housed so that they looked completely integrated with the rest of the car if the exterior was a work of art the interior was even more so the work of Eric Clough was a masterpiece of uh, minimalism at first glance however everything any however everything any occupant could ever need was in there it just appeared when it was wanted so although you couldn't seem see them at first glance which you heard i was kind of fooled they were computed terminals available <clears throat> along with a beverage bar and workables oh boy and yet it was possible to stretch out using the whole length of the interior because of the front passenger seat could be reclined to meet up with the rear seat this was a car for people who expected to be chauffeured Ooh. all right so you don't even yeah that's what i'm saying you don't even drive this car you just there's the interior folks yeah you don't even drive this car you just get chauffeured in it okay um yeah that's that's definitely an interior all right so moving on at a glance country of manufacture usa front mounted normal aspirated 19 uh, 90 degree v16 okay gas fuel injected with displacement on demand technology allowing the engine to run on as few as four cylinders with when cruising displacement all right 793 cubic inch power i'm probably just going to start reading this i like short videos long ones are okay too power 1000 base horsepower torque 1000 pounds uh, per foot drivetrain four speed electronic electronically controlled automatic transmission rear wheel drive suspension wheels and brakes unequal length double wishbone suspension at the front with independent semi trailing arms at the rear six piston cali uh, calipers fitted front rear gripping 16 inch discs at each corner okay the curve weight the weight of the car 5004 pounds wheelbase 140 inches length 223 inches width 69 inches it's not really a wide car uh, then again it's pretty wide but it's not real wide height 55 inches all right performance 0 to 62 not applicable that's crazy right they don't even tell you um, that's probably because it could uh, the car is kind of funny because it, I don't know I wonder does it have a you know what I wonder about this car 
if they ever tried to do this car again, right, they should have a button for you to decide whether you want to do four, six, or eight cylinders. I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. All right, so zero to 62, not applicable. And then last but not least, it says top speed 139 miles per hour, 224 kilometers. Debuted in Detroit 2003. Uh, exterior design, Brian Smith. And interior design by Eric Cloth. All right, so thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Pretty hot car. Enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed the read. And I think some other cars like this I may do a shorter read. The ones that are a little bit less interesting. But Cadillac, for you, baby, you got to get the full read regardless on whatever I do because I love me some Cadillacs. All right, y'all. Till next time, please, um, you know, subscribe if you didn't do it by now. You know, at least subscribe, you know, or hit the like button. Hook me up. I'm trying to join. I'm trying to um, grow this channel a little bit. And I can use all the help that I can get. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time. High rise and horsepower, baby. Peace.